Hello everyone, reporting today for First Updates Now, I'm Ab Haas, and with me here is Team 18527, PCM Alchemist from Iowa. They were recently the Winning Alliance first pick at the Iowa State Championships, earning them a spot to the Houston Power Play World Championships coming up in April. I'm really excited to dive into this bot. It's very consistent, high scoring, just all around great robot, what you would expect from a world caliber team, and I really want to show the community what they have. So without further ado, we'll get into their behind the bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube, including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. All right, guys, let's start with your intake. You have a very interesting uh, extension, you know, arm design for your intake. It's not just like a simple claw that's on the deposit. So walk us through that. And first, like why you decided on this design, right? Like why have that intake horizontal extension? Last year, if I remember correctly, you guys just had one arm doing everything. And I see that robot in the background. <laughs> so it was definitely a very um, distinct or, you know, it was a it was a choice you had to make to go for that extension. So walk us through it. Yeah, so the big difference between last year and this year is we can't be in, this, in the depositing place and the intake place at the same time, but this year we can be because there's not that warehouse restriction. Um, and so we're able to, you know, be in the deposit position and already have it extended for the intake. And that was the key, the key feature of this horizontal extension is that we eliminate the return to the intake of position. Of course. Of course. And so, you know, having looked at all these uh, various robots that we've seen this season, was having that intake extension a decision you guys made since day one? Or was it based off of, you know, seeing competition? Um, it was pretty early on in the season uh, since we ran with a really temporary, just linear sliding claw robot at the mm -hmm. beginning of the season. Uh, we were trying to figure out what would be the meta later on so we could work towards it and create a robot. Um, with as much time as we would need to iterate and make something good. Sure. Um, and I remember it was back in like November, we saw a couple early designs for similar robots. Uh, Fata Morgana's uh, also stood out that had something right. similar work. extend out, grabbed our attention, and we started talking about how we could do this and make it better for us. Yeah, and so, you know, looking at your intake design uh let's put some you know uh let's talk about the hardware a little bit what are you guys using for the linear slides uh you know is it masumi's go build a viper slides linear rail something different and have you had like any major developments to it throughout the season yeah so we, we're just using the go build a four stage viper slide kit and it's really all we had access to and it's, it's been working pretty great for us yeah that that's great and so is your intake extension something you use extensively in teleop or is that more just reserved for the autonomous period so the teleop extension was really the, one of the big reasons why we did it so that we can eliminate like driving back and forth uh -huh. as much as we can and even uh -huh. when we do have to drive to get to the other side of the field we can be extending while we're driving sure uh, and that's like yeah, and I see you guys have a very unique claw design, definitely a lot of pocketing uh, going on there, and I see that servo linkage on the side. So walk us through your claw design, any like major upgrades you've made throughout the season or big realizations you had, talk about those as well. Uh, so the claw design is um, just basic linkages right on the other side that brick it and then recenter it. Uh, the reason that we wanted to do this design over most others is that it was really good at over centering and making sure that the cone was in a consistent position for our transfer. <laughs> if I actually uh, type it, no, no. <laughs> yep. So like to get that position right and then the claw is very secure, comes back and it comes back to a consistent position. Yeah. So I see you guys don't have um like another wrist mechanism like you have that arm pivot at the base of your intake but you don't have another wrist so was that a decision you just said you know we don't really need this extra servo let's not add the extra weight or was it like some other reason behind that so we're initially planning on doing a wrist like e either with a you know 
virtual four bar uh -huh. or, <laughs> or something else just to be able to pull off the five stack. That was our, uh -huh. our main thing working with it. But we tested it with just a simple arm and it was able to pull off the five stack pretty consistently. So, sure, sure. Yeah, and so the, the kind of, and if you can make it as simple as possible, the extra complexity yeah. doesn't actually make it yeah, better. Yeah. And so let's talk a little bit about the sensors you guys have on your intake. Uh, you know, sensors, servos, motors, what are you running and how do you tie those in with your programming to make your automations work really well? Yeah, so for, for auto, we just use the encoders on the slide motors and the, the turret motor. <laughs> yeah. And we, we have our, our dead real encoders on our drivetrain, so we're able to get that pretty consistently parked and then the distance is pretty well set. Sure. And so for the world championship is like more sensor integration, something you're looking to do, like, you know, detecting if the cone is in your intake, if it's transferred, things like that. Or have you just found you have the reliability? Um, I think the biggest issue we ran into with sensors at state was just the wall distance and consistency. Mm -hmm. uh, we found that the different fields, the different walls in the different fields had the walls different distances away. So we're thinking about having like some set point with the, some way to detect that with the sure. R, so we're that more consistent. The current plan is to integrate it at the base of the claw here so that you can just see directly out when the claw is open. Yeah, yeah, of course. And so one definitely one of the most unique things about your guys' robot is that transfer uh, and the deposit claw. So walk us through that design, how it's changed throughout the season, or you know, if it was something that you, just, you guys just got right on the first try. Yeah, so we realized that the vertical slide and the turret would be able to recenter really quickly. And we didn't want to sit having to wait above it in order to grab it. Uh -huh. The full horizontal slide came back. And so we sort of designed it so that the last part of this intake sequence would be the horizontal slide retracting or the arm coming out. So whichever one of those happens later, we we're able to take that, that last part of the sequence and not to wait around for another mechanism. Mm -hmm. And so how does your deposit claw or I don't, I don't know what you guys call it. It's not really like a traditional claw. How does your deposit yeah. mechanism work? Yeah, so it's it's just running a, a slotted linkage here. Um, yeah, yeah. No, we can see it really well. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, it just has a, a slotted ring, linkage, so it like sort of reaches out and pulls the claw back in, pulls the cone back in, and when it does that, you know, it has a has a really secure grip on it. Um, you can see. Wow. The of it. Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's fantastic. That's. Definitely haven't seen any mechanism like that on another robot uh, this season in, in the same style. You know, we've seen some, we interviewed another team. They had a nose picker, as they called it. But the <laughs> slotted linkage design is really, really innovative. And it looks extremely smooth, uh, might I add. So, you know, have you guys done anything special on the hardware side to make sure it's really smooth and rigid at the same time? Our first iteration of this was a lot wider, and it had a, uh, some issues lining up. We had some spacers. We are using, like, a... Just a four bar link. And uh -huh. just, it didn't grab it as tight as this slotted slotted linkage. Uh -huh. And it also was like catching because our spacers were too big. And it was having a lot of side load on them. Sure. Uh, so th this was the probably the space resign. So that was switching to a slotted linkage and a single, single part that slides. Yeah. And so I see you also have like some sort of springing mechanism or just something giving it that rotational degree of freedom uh, about like the whole. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. what, what exactly is going on there? Uh, please tell us. <laughs> so that is just, this entire mechanism is just attached to a uh, servo hub here. And we're just driving that. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, yeah, yeah, that's, cool, that, that's really cool. And so what advice would you guys have for teams that are looking to implement like a very similar mechanism in the sense that mechanically it's quite complex, but it's been implemented really well, right? And so what advice would you have to teams that are looking to achieve something similar? How can they do it? Don't overcomplicate it. Um, <laughs> something that's like, uh, as simple as possible, the least number of moving parts, because the more pieces of complexity you add, the more points of failure there are. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. Then, additionally, the more of those error points you can catch earlier on in the development process, the more iterations you're going to be able to 
you're going to be able to have time for and the resources for instead of having to fully flesh out multiple designs. For sure, for sure. And so I guess my last question to you guys is now looking forward to the World Championship. I, If I'm correct, I believe you guys were at least on the winning lines, if not the winning lines captain in Iowa last year. You know, So this is not your first rodeo in Houston. I'm sure you guys want to do very well again. So what's the plan? Any any big changes you want to tell tell the community or, or are you guys going to keep it under wraps for a little bit? Uh, most of the changes that we want to make, I think we're wanting to keep under wraps. Um, but a lot of it is just speeding up our tally up and being able to deposit a lot faster. Also a little auto consistency. Yeah. Sure. sure. And so do you think going for that, like the far further high junction in auto is something you guys plan on doing? Or do you guys want to stick it out and battle that center line high junction? Yeah, I think the, the safer high would yeah. be well, if we can get that developed in time. Got it. Yeah. So PC Alchemist, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure watching you guys uh, perform on the field. Very high scoring, consistent robot. And I'm really glad we could get this interview done. So reporting for first updates now, I'm Ab Haas and this is Team 18527. Thank you, everyone. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. Check out our all new FTC content coming to Fund's YouTube including new hosts from the FTC community. We'll have resource guides, top 10 moments, behind the bots interviews, and walkthroughs to help your FTC team improve at youtube.com slash first updates now. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.